This is Harry Luge, and this is another great episode of, of ETX Rocks featuring Marvin. From the great state of Texas, this is the latest episode of the ETX Rock Show. Nestled in the piney woods of East Texas, the ETX Rock Show delivers the stories and songs of talented artists of all genres, all styles, from the unheralded and unheard to the legends and beyond. We bring a passion for music and a drive to go behind the curtain with our guests. We focus on all artists, from LA to New York, Nashville down to Texas, and everywhere in between. ETX is our location, not a limitation. Now as always, it's viewers and listeners like you out there that are our biggest support for the show. If you want to contribute to the show, please do so by donating to www.paypal.me forward slash ETX rocks and thank you for tuning in. Wherever you're tuned in, please hit the like, follow, and or subscribe buttons. And now for another great episode of ETX Rock. All right, guys, thanks for checking out this episode, which is number 224 of the ETX Rock Show, hosted by me, Boston Chris. Now, we have a huge treat for you guys this week. These guys are originally from Israel. And uh, Danny Markovich and Danny Rabin formed the jazz fusion band Marvin, moved to Chicago and released their first album in 2009. Having amassed a social media following over 150,000 strong and releasing five more albums since then, they have been viewed hundreds of thousands of times on both YouTube and Facebook. We are really excited to talk to the guys from Marvin about their unique sound and why they think it has taken off so much. All right, guys, Boston Chris here, and we are on location from Big Sandy Music Hall in Big Sandy, Texas. We definitely want to thank the guys over at Big Sandy Music Hall, Andy and Kay Kirby, for hosting us out here today. And we want to thank the guys from Marvin as well for um, agreeing to come on the show for the first time. Thank you. Happy so you guys have been traveling pretty hard lately. Yeah. Um, on the Since road from New Orleans today to get here. Uh-huh. Um, so, I mean, as a traveling band you guys are going pretty hard How, what is that like being on the road so much awesome it's the perfect life yeah for people like us yeah so i mean you guys are originally from israel uh -huh. and how so how did you end up in chicago uh well we knew a drama yeah we knew a drama when we started in israel we met there in 2007 Seven. yeah and uh i came there with a drummer from boston for a summer, and we met Danny right when he was done with his army service. For a fan of us that used to live in New York at the time. Yeah, yes. and uh, this guy one day had food poisoning when we, were, when we had studio time booked, and uh, we we just got in the studio, the two of us, and started recording improvised music, and that became Marvin. And then we moved with him back to Chicago with the hopes of starting a band, and then that fell apart. In a month? Yeah, in a month or so. Wow. But we kept, you know, kept at it and started making our first album. Then got a, a band together and started touring full time in 2011. Wow! Yeah. So were you guys already playing music when you were over in Israel? Yeah. So I mean, what 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 are some of the influences personally for you guys musically from from that part of the world? Is it is a lot of jazz played over there? Well, Danny. He started playing saxophone, so yeah, so jazz, you know. But uh, again, it's, you know, the age we grew up in, you know, you see, you already have music from all over the world, infiltrated right. in every every country, right? So, yeah, right. it's it's very weird. Like you know, people that are our generation, years too, already grew up in a world where, you know, it's not like you heard your grandpa and your parents playing, and that was your exposure to music, or maybe had a few records. It's just like the internet, and you know, like all these file sharing yeah. things were just but, starting to be a thing. But before YouTube. Yeah, so yeah. it was an interesting period where it already could have an eclectic taste that was really broad and we had, you know, you had record store, but stores, but it was still not like Spotify where everything was like easy. You, yeah. had, you had email, so a lot of yeah. stuff was on there, but well, no, it's not. Yeah, like, you, had, you still had to like put like this very you had to small, work for it. You had small to amount of work. For your kids, yeah. we, went, like, we used to go on the ICQ and then down yeah. and down. It's not like the old days where you had to find a record store or right. a hardware store that happened to have records. Well, also to find a record store back in the day was harder. Now you can Google it. I mean, I, I still remember <laughs> when I was like 15, I went to New York with my family. And, you know, I went to like that Virgin Mega Store in Times Square. I bought like 25 CDs because I just couldn't yeah, believe. Yeah, every time you buy Tower Records or something, you're like, oh my God. Yeah, you, I couldn't believe the stuff you could find in the U.S. You know, right. When I was 15, it wasn't really available. It was available. much harder over well, there. Well, yeah. also, we didn't have Amazon, so I remember when I was, I used to go to the jazz festival in Alada, I went for a couple of years and 
I would always find a cult and album that I can find uh, like yeah. the Yeah, so in a sense, like, you know, stuff from like, you know, from the U- American music, stuff from the US was harder maybe to find for Israelis, but it was still available and we were exposed to it. Uh, but in terms of Israeli music, we were also exposed to that. And especially Israeli music of the era from like the 50s to the 70s, right. something very special happened there that um, it's long gone now, but we grew up with that sound in our ears. So you're tapping into a lot of different styles of music. Well, there's well, well, an advantage and disadvantage to everything. So back in the day in Israel, when you didn't have, uh, I think it's happened in other countries too, but when you didn't have everything available, then a lot of unique styles developed in, in every country. So that's what we got in like, like I said, 50s, 60s, 70s, and even a tiny bit of the 80s. Um, when everything became available, it kind of disappeared, the Israeli style. On the other hand, when we grew up, like Danny said, it was available enough for us to buy the albums that we want and find the artists, but it wasn't so available like it is now where you can't actually sit down and listen to an album because right. you have too much yeah. available. Also, Oversaturation. Well, yeah. I remember when you know, when you like an, again, it was before Spotify and streaming, but when you liked and you find somebody that you like, you could download his discography all of a sudden, right. I think right. it was like in 2006 or something. And, but it's hard for you to actually process all this music. Yeah, it's too much at once when you right. get it that way. But uh, I think also, you know, a thing that's very special about Israeli music, and that, that maybe like, you know, the people listening to you don't know a whole lot about the history of our country, but there's a big difference between what people would consider Jewish music and Israeli music. And Israel is a country that was formed in 1948, and really had to reinvent itself, yeah. you know, its own culture from scratch. And they weren't interested in bringing a lot of the stuff from Europe or from the Arab countries that, you know, the Jews came from. So there was like this cultural strive to make something new and yeah. unique. And around the 70s, it was a mixture of that new and unique thing that they did develop with all of the sudden like Brazilian music, American music, blues, rock. So all these people were drawing influence from all over the world and mixing it with something unique and brand new, you know, new in the sense that it wasn't there before the 50s, and making this new style of music that was very good in the 70s in Israel. The problem is that the generation after that was already so like Americanized that everything just sounds like a mock Pearl Jam or a mock Guns N' Roses, you know, with a Hebrew accent. That's not as good because you don't don't have the same amount of money. So, but but there was like this moment where there was actual fusion happening in Israel between what, how these people actually were and the kind of stuff they grew up with and the new stuff they were bringing from the outside. It made something very beautiful, and we grew up with that in our ear. The generation, our generation, that continued creating Israeli music. Kind of, bomb. but nothing is really about yeah, it. Really. It's, it's just American Hebrew, music it's in Hebrew. Yeah. You know? So the word fusion for you guys, how do you how do you personally define that word? Oh man, uh, jazz rock. Yeah, we we just call it, we just you know would consider ourselves jazz rock. But if you listen to our music, I don't know if it's very easy to call it just jazz rock. I think it's um, more like we came. So originally, I think fusion was jazz plus a different style, another style, and then it became kind of jazz plus rock. But if you listen to the um, fusion time in the 70s, like Mavishnu Orchestra and Weather Report and all those guys, which were not necessarily influenced by, but it became like its own, own thing, which, yeah. is like, which is mostly the concept of jazz, like most of our music is improvised um, in that sense, and you have to we improvise over harmony and not like jam bands, for example, that you know, uh, improvise over vamps mostly. Um, but the sounds, like sonically, it's more like rock music and yeah. the, the harmony is I different. Mean, a style of music is defined by the constraints you put in, right? So it's like just like, you know, like a game. It's like you have reality in a game. It's just like, you know, you, set, you have an arbitrary set of rules and that's the game now. Right. Uh, so our style of music, you know, is really defined by the constraints we put on ourselves meaning he plays a tiny saxophone most of the time i play an electric guitar with a rock sound we have an electric bass and a drum kit we play over structures that are defined by chords so by harmony so yeah. in that sense it's coming out of jazz it's incredible and then, stuff and then man. oh thank you you're welcome and then and then we write the music that's that we perceive as good right yeah. so our style is really limited by the constraints that we 
choose to commit to, which is like, you know, we could bring in a tuba player right. and we could do a lot of stuff that we would, or we could not solo and write, you know, things and oh, stuff for a different band. Yeah. Or write for a different band, but we don't. So a lot of times, you know, the, the kind of stuff, I mean, the, the kind of stuff that ends up defining what you do, a lot has to do with the stuff you don't allow yourself to do, you know, and some of it is pretty arbitrary too. Yeah. You know, like for me, for instance, with guitar playing, I don't tap, you know. I don't know why, but it's like, yeah. you know, it's, and, a, and a lot of times, like, you know, the things you, I don't know, physically decide not to do for some mysterious motive will define a lot of things about your sound, right? So, so some things you like, some things you don't like. So when, you, when you're talking about what fusion mean to, uh, means to us, I don't think, like, there is a particular style of music that we, like, necessarily won't kind of venture into. It's more like there are attitudes towards writing and self-expression that we don't go into right and plus it, it probably it, has a lot to do with what you're feeling at any particular moment in time yeah i too. would say also though that us specifically uh we don't try to mix styles in like like a lot of people in fusion actually did like they have a reggae song and then they have a you know like afrobeat song and then they have to have a swing song and we don't we don't do stuff like that it's yeah like we we just write music what we think is not like Danny said that fit our style of playing and our and our instrumentation well also I mean like thinking about styles like you know uh, like when you think about bebop and you think like for me let's say you know both Sonny Stitt and Charlie Parker play bebop but I don't to say that when I'm listening to them I hear bebop both times yeah. I just hear people you know right. so it's like I think once you get to some you know past a certain level of depth as a listener you stop really hearing style because style is more like a big picture thing right style is more of a second tier people yeah it's like impressionist like like van gogh and gauguin or whatever it's like you know they're all painting in a similar style but when you actually look at them they're universes apart you know right so i think you know music is about individuals painting a unique picture through their own like lens you know so i think a lot of times style is when you take a lot of people and you try to find what common what's common between them good people that play great music but you take the wrong thing out of it. Right. So it's like, it's, you know, it's not like, oh, this guy plays eight notes and this guy plays eight notes. That's gonna be, we'll call it hard bop, you know, because that's not the important thing about those players. That's not what makes them good. Right. So, I mean, we have a, a saxophonist and an electric guitarist, and you guys are amazing individually. So, I mean, after meeting, how quick did, was it for you guys to know that the mix was like, I mean, chemically perfect for y'all. Well, because um, I mean that's not something you typically pretty, see. Pretty much immediately. Lot. Yeah, we started writing together, which we we I, neither of us had that experience with other people. So that the fact that was possible. Yeah, and it's still was a long before, but it's right. yeah. Same, yeah. So I think um, you know we still write everything together. So I think that that's key, uh, and I. You know, the more I grow up, the more I have kind of an insight into how rare that is. Yeah. You know, where it's actually a creative, com you know, process and not a process of compromise. Right. Because a lot of people, to write together, it's more like everybody thinks that they're right yep. and what ends up on the paper or on Sometimes you're giving away a lot of yourself. Well, it's like two people, it's like people arguing about building a bridge. It's one guy wants to build a bridge, while one guy doesn't, so they build half a bridge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Half a bridge is not good. No. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, we have we have a way of writing where you know it's it's quick and it's efficient. So right, you know, that's and and you guys are I mean you're connecting with a lot of people all across the world with with this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, you know the video that I saw recently was the Israeli jazz mm -hmm. video where you've got the four musicians. Yeah, that's new. It's a new video. It's yeah. a ridiculous. I mean, oh, thank you. completely insane. Yeah. Um, just watching you guys individually shine as as a collective unit is so different than. Um, a lot of four-piece bands, I think, because mm -hmm. you can step on other people's toes and um, overshadow somebody in your own band a lot of times. But in this video, you guys, uh, it looks like you made a concerted effort to make sure that each person in the band has their time to shine on a particular song. More so us too, but yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, as, a, as a fan, that's what I got from the video. Yeah. Um, and just seeing your individuality in each of your pieces. Well, we tie, when we have... So me and Danny had music and you know and and uh, arrange it and produce it. 
And for us, what we always tell our musicians, because our lineup changed a few times, is if you can do something well, we'll find a way to put it in. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, yeah. I would say that we're, ty- we're trying to make the situation uh, to be such a situation that the best, best is, like, is coming for. Right. Yeah. In the show. Yeah, there's really not a whole lot of holding back that happens in our band. No. <laughs> <laughs> and and if I, it's fine to say, well, if anybody holds back, it's me and Danny. Yeah. Right? Because we can do a lot of shit. <laughs> but the <laughs> rhythm section is always, whatever you can do, we'll forget it. <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll throw it in there somewhere. Yeah. You guys mentioned earlier that you improvise a lot of times, too. Most of the time. <laughs> Most of the time. Well, not like in the jazz way. So it's within... A structure. Right. So, well, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. But like, if you if you're improvising something that just hits a chord with you, um, how repeatable is that for you? Well, I mean, in- improvising, you know, for people who don't improvise a lot, seems like um, seems like a different kind of freedom than what it actually is, right? right. But it's a lot more like uh, speaking a language than it is like. Uh, you know, inventing a language. Right. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's like learning a new language rather than... Well, we've learned the language. So for us now, it's a, it's a, it's a thing about... The, it's the freedom to get to the idea using spontaneous words. And every time you maybe discuss the same kind of topic, you're free with your words to repaint and you know a picture that gets up that you get to re-update every day yeah. that kind of keeps keeps up with how smart you got right. about the subject so let's say you learned a lot of stuff tuesday so you don't have to repeat the sweet the speech from monday yeah. you can be tuesday you you know That's talking awesome. about that subject you know so it's right. so because you're improvising and you know you have such command of the words that you just focus on the ideas and the words just serve you to paint the picture. Wow. Right? Yeah, so, like musically, like the details are very different. Like the lines are different, and a lot of stuff is different, but the big picture yeah, just it, changes it stays, a little bit. It stays current, it stays updated. And that's the idea about jazz improvisation, is that, you know, why commit, like a lot of people are like, why, you know, why wouldn't you just write a solo? You know, but if you think about it, like, you know, the, the people who are the best at writing, right? Beethoven, Mozart, mm-hmm. you know, Vivaldi, people like that, then they had to write. The music couldn't move forward if they didn't write it because there was no recording. Right. Right. That was the only way. That was the, that was the most. That, that was the technology of the day. They invented Western notation just to preserve music because they were basically saying our shit is so brilliant. We really want to keep giving it. <laughs> right. You know. Uh, so improvisation wasn't structured into that culture. We don't have that problem because of technology, because you can make a record. And yeah, but even it. if it's, you know, it's more than the record, though, it's like to me, people that learn those solos are not moving forward mus- musically. Because right. every day, with you, every time that you play, especially for the audience, it's, you know, yeah. you get, you learn a little bit. So if you move a little bit every day, after a year you're going to be playing completely different than you played the year before. But if you play the same solo every night, you're not going, you're going to st- it's going to be stagnant. Yeah, yeah. It's like I you're agree. just not going yeah. to advance as a musician. Yeah. Yeah. You guys find yourself surprising each other or even yourself during an impro- improvisation? Uh, like, man, did I just do that? What? <laughs> surprising. I don't know. I mean, we think we're pretty good. Right. So it's like, you know. I mean, I, well, I agree with that for sure. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but, but it's like, you know, so it's like totally. You know, sometimes again, you find the complete new too, right? Sometimes you just find something completely new and then like, ah, oh, I'm going to love a second day. Like, I, I, th- <laughs> when you have, I think when you have very complete systems for how you think about music, then nothing can be very surprising in that sense. Like, a lot of times, like, I'm really surprised by how well things connected, right. but I never have like it's it doesn't have i think it's been a long time for either of us since you know we played something we couldn't name right? well i think right? the closest thing was like you know when you didn't uh he was recording with doesn't swamp us what he played and it's like he did all something something's like uh pedal steel yeah, yeah but, so so something like that, like, oh, that's cool. sometimes i i guess okay so if there are three elements to music which are rhythm you know where you put things pitch what you put in what scale, what chord, and then timbre, the sound color, I think we've already practiced and learned enough to where we won't surprise each other using rhythm or pitch. Okay. So we know all the scales. There's not gonna be a new one right. that emerges. We know what's available over the chords. We know what all the rhythms are, even, even if we don't necessarily use them all, 
I can name what subdivision everything's at. But in the realm of color, because you know instruments are so weird and sound is so weird, occasionally you'll stumble, you'll stumble upon a new thing on guitar or saxophone. Yeah. And there'll be like an effecty kind of thing that pops out and that would be like, oh, I'm going to use that all the time. Yeah. Throw out there. We're all sick of it. You know, so I guess out of the three elements that make up music, the sound color part of it, like yeah, how, how you do yeah. things, uh, sometimes you'll surprise, like you'll, there'll be a happy accident. You'll find like a new way of doing the same old thing. Right. And that just comes from playing a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. Playing and trying a new thing, maybe learning, something, seeing somebody, hearing something, something will... And again, improvisation is the funniest thing because it's like you talk about like limitations and surprising yourself. It's all a game of what occurs to you, mm -hmm. right? And that's the thing that people don't understand. It's like the quality, like the practice of getting better is not moving your fingers faster or thinking faster. It's having better, better things occur to you, right. having better ideas. But it's like, how do you do that? You know, there's no paved way to, like, let's say we're talking about politics and then I'm like, well, like your, your ideas are interesting, but can, can a better idea occur to you? Yeah. Not now, you mm -hmm. know, it's like maybe if I, you know, then you just go back into the world of learning things, thinking about things, and then you just kind of let a part of you die and another part of you be reborn. And, in that new kind of rebirth, mm -hmm. a better idea would occur interest, to you. The interesting stuff about it, though, is that I find, especially listening to a lot of players, that you get you get those ideas playing shows and not staying at home and practicing. Yeah. Right. So it's like you have to practice. Me and Daniel say practice many, 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 many hours. But after a while, practicing become like if you just practice and not play a lot of shows, it it become you actually become worse. You have to be in the world, right? It's like it, it um, and and it's a, I don't think, but you see it. You see the opposite example too. There's you know people who play live all the time and never get better because they would never go home and think about what they did right if you assume that you are perfection mm -hmm. and you think you're great and then yeah. you go out and play shows you might not get any worse but you're not going to get any better yeah, so it's a process it's a process of you know going out there playing and then coming back home and figuring it out figuring out like well where did i get stuck why well, do some I people do also well? play just live and again like i said just repeat the same thing so if you do the same thing same thing again and again and yeah but I think, I think even in the world of improvising you have to be the, the type of person that you know in the back of their mind like it's just like talking right like there's a joy of conversing and there's a joy of sharing ideas and being expressive but there's also you know the the stale feeling and and the entropy of like man I'm, I'm gonna feel like a huge douche if I just go and give the same speech right. week after week after week. So people do that. At what point do mm -hmm. you need to update your personality right. and the things that are in your mind? So it's like if you're the kind of person that never gets sick of themselves, then you're not gonna get any better, right? Because right? you have to get to a point where you know, even if you, you know, it's it's funny because up to a point you love yourself, love yourself, love yourself. For me at least, you know, love the way I play, and then it's like every night it's like, oh my god it's all the same i need new shit right mm -hmm. it's like and then you just like hear yourself and you're like oh, you know so and then you just start fiddling with some new tools yeah, i think the thing that's the most like it is comedy if you think about comedian going on the road and telling jokes every night it's like you can't tell the same jokes for 30 years right uh, like after well, a while then you become the joke yeah yeah, yeah exactly. i agree so i mean you guys have six albums out now Almost the seventh, seventh one is seventh done and one. shipped to being mixed. So. Very cool. So almost yeah. seven. How do you guys think your sound has, in style has evolved over time? How did it evolve? Uh, well, I mean, I think we play much better uh, by every measurement of, of that thing. You know, it's uh, our first three albums, which are Marvin Breaking the Cycle and Last Chapter of Dreaming, were before we started touring intensely. Right. And uh, well, last chapter was just like we could yeah, start touring chapter. after breaking the cycle, and last chapter we made when we just started touring. And uh, I think it's like we were more in a modern, you know, attitude towards record making in those days, in the sense that it was like being in a studio, using the studio as a tool, having a lot of instruments, a lot, a lot of layers and asking, and, and the music was kind of like a fantasy, a dream, you know what I mean? It's like you dream up a structure that doesn't have any sort of like 
it's not rooted in reality it's rooted in your imagination right and then you just try to pursue it and put it together piece by piece wow. then we started playing and then it was all of a sudden the process of recording wasn't so much about engineering a moment it was about capturing a moment yeah and that that really changed the way we did things because all of a sudden we had a sound that was you know that it's like to do anything except that wasn't built on that as as the you know as the nucleus of the music was strange you know to, to just start with like a percussion thing and put bass on and put a guitar on there was already songs some, that we're never gonna play yeah there's already something like you know as opposed to like something that's generated from nothing there was already something in the center so making a record was about just putting stuff around yeah, the center you know? right so, what a great way of looking at it yeah um, you know uh, man just pursuing the sound yeah. well, even over the last three albums we made well you have to have a sound to pursue a sound and a lot yeah. of people like you know really want to feel good about themselves so they're like I have a sound and it's just a, you know going to the studio is just a process of uncovering it it's like yeah. who says you have a sound how many shows right. did you play who did you what you know it's like we didn't have a sound it sounds started. like you know you guys are like the almost the opposite of most bands most bands are very rigid in there and what they're putting out especially during shows you know like we've been talking about you know just doing the same thing over and over again and I think a lot of bands are rigid in that you guys are more loose and letting things just kind of shine on the fly and seeing what happens each night and this becomes less stale that well way. I mean when you have a skill on I think it's you know it just makes sense it's like for us to do the same thing it just would be boring for us it's right, like I think I for a lot of people it's a challenge to, to play both parts like yeah and which is fine again I don't know how it's gonna come off to people but that's the way it is and it's like I can't play the same thing every night I'm gonna die from boredom <laughs> no for real that's though. true there's, right. a, there's a question I think a person needs to ask themselves and I think I touched upon this like you know like a little bit ago but it's like let's say it's Monday tonight and you're playing every night till Friday what how is it logical that Monday you is better at deciding what to play than Friday you you know it's like you would think that the you in the present is the best you that there mm -hmm. is it's playing because it's been do just from the sim sheer fact that you know that that you has been doing it the longest very cool so like the, the you of Friday should probably just should be better solo. than the one on Monday yeah, yeah so why, why why write a solo on Monday that you're gonna play on Friday just play a new and solo and also how much harder would it be again imagine what it's like to learn how to give a speech about a subject or learn the exact words you have to use and the exact spaces you have to use and you have exact timing and you know you have to measure the speed that you're talking it would be much harder and just learning the subject really well and then just coming out and talking well, again, you know it's like presidents are reading stuff from teleprompters but it's uh but but you know well they, just, they can be a fool they, they, if they're being a fool for for like for two measures then right. everybody, it's a huge thing for us like hey, if i'm a fool yeah the for stakes one, are low but, but it's yeah. you know it's like if you're actually an expert in what you're talking about you don't need to read as much yeah. you know yeah, it's like you just need oh, what you're what people come to see is how you think in time right, right? Yeah. it's like there's no it's not like if you go see like Van Gogh paint he's gonna embarrass himself because he's like <laughs> it's not tracing starry right. night you know yeah. it's like whatever he has on his mind is probably gonna be good enough in the moment right? very cool so you guys have been tuned in to episode 224 we're sitting here with the guys from Marvin at Big Sandy Music Hall in Big Sandy Texas we're gonna be right back with more from Marvin right after this hey guys it's Katie Lynn and thank you guys so much for tuning in to the ETX Rock Show all right, so we are back with Marvin. This is episode 224 of the ETX Rock Show. I definitely want to thank you guys for sitting down and chatting with us a little bit before your show tonight. Nice We're to out here at Big Sandy Music Hall. They're in between gigs at New from New Orleans to Houston and rocking that road really, really hard. Yeah, New um, Orleans and Houston are in between Big Sandy. Which is not exactly true. No, Big Sandy is in between, if anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I, I do have a couple more questions for y'all. Uh, sure. I think one thing that I really want to know, I know you have a lot of sound, a lot of different pieces going on in, in your sound. Have you guys ever um, considered having a vocalist as well? Or? Danny sings all the time in the car. And it's also too. <laughs> I do. I sing every style, every song. <laughs> I just think a lot of songs by the band Kansas today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, you want, if you want to check out our live feed from the band, from the van, 
then then he takes a quest and he can actually sing any song in history. Really? Yeah, I have, I have photographic memory. <laughs> All right, we're definitely gonna have to send people over. For Child. That. Uh, no, no, no we're not gonna do it. Name no. a song. Okay, uh, song. no woman, no cry. Bob no, Marley. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but if you go to our Facebook and and uh, like it and go yeah. on a live feed. Well, I've already done that, so that means I get a song. Uh, when you when you're in the event. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you need some muse to hit, and the muse doesn't. You have to be in the band. I have to be in. I have to be in the muse sitting next to it. I have to um, be in motion. No, uh, you know, I feel like we're doing, we're we're onto something with this instrumental thing. I think we're just gonna keep doing that for a while. Yeah, yeah and I completely agree. Yeah. I would have had more musicians again, like I told uh, Anto. It's uh, it was here before you didn't see. We it. actually had one great idea, Danny's idea, that what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our melodies and take all the hatred oh. we get online and put it the th the things. That people critique us to the tune of our melodies. So you yeah. play too many notes. Then way, way, way too many notes. <laughs> saxophone is way too small. Way too small. You don't have a soul. <laughs> you don't have a soul. This is all things. Right, Jews can't play jazz. Yeah, we got. <laughs> we got that thing. A lot of stuff. Why does there always have to be haters, man? Huh? Why does there always have to be haters? Because oh, uh, once you're competent, you it's you also pass in judgment. Also, uh, yeah, high high skill in something breeds resentment from people. Who yeah, because they feel like you're judging. It's like the world is judging them for sucking. Yeah, we actually. And it is. So that's fine if you want to hate. It goes to the story of Cain and Abel. <laughs> 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 they weren't. They didn't make the right sacrifices, so they resent everybody that did. Yeah. Eventually, they'll try to kill us. Great answer. <laughs> so my last question for Marvin today is: Who do you guys? Who who is Marvin? Markovich, Rabin. So, just, I mean, how would you guys describe who you are? Like Somebody's it. hearing about y'all for the first <laughs> two, time. Two geniuses in the rhythm section. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, that's a good one. Uh, how do we describe us? Two geniuses in a rhythm section. <laughs> that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, tagline. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to love that. <laughs> Are we changing our Facebook info? <laughs> <laughs> we need to. Oh my god! Oh man! Yeah, that's we need to change the t-shirt. Yeah, we need to change the, yeah, we need to change the name everything. of the next album. <laughs> <laughs> Did it just come up? Oh, okay. just like yeah, yeah, the improvisation. Yeah. <laughs> if we decided yeah, yeah. on Monday, us that's chose awesome. an answer, yeah. and then, it, it would have been and then oh, Saturday. <laughs> that's that's perfect. With two geniuses People in the rhythm section. People are gonna click the heck out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Two geniuses in the rhythm section. I hope oh I can fit God. that. Yeah, I'm sure I can. All right. I give you permission to use the number two. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the number two. Yeah, hashtag two. No. Yeah. So, uh, again, I um, definitely want to thank you guys for sitting down with us for a little while. Happy to. And uh, so, if uh, people are hearing about Marvin for the first time, where can they follow along with y'all on social media and Facebook stuff like Facebook.com slash Marvin Music would be the best thing and if you go to the video video tab or whatever you call it yeah uh, you can find like oh. a lot of us live oh. in the studio you can find Everything. some gypsy just shredding you can find some lessons free lessons about music uh, you can find some of some music from our album mm -hmm. so that's the best place really okay marvin music on facebook do you guys have a web page as well yeah it's yeah but it's not the best dot marvin music.com but why do people go to websites I never get it anymore. Go to the website if you want to buy music, because yeah. like, that, that's much better for us instead of iTunes, which is the worst record company. They're not, to... These aren't fancy people. They're just hanging out on Facebook like the rest of us. Yeah. Just go to Facebook. Go to Facebook. Well, we'll, we'll definitely uh, put in the description below both your Facebook and your webpage. That way people can have uh, one click stop to buy your music and, and get all that stuff. You guys have a Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff too. Yeah. You just have Facebook. We don't use that. Still me. thinking about two geniuses. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. Yeah, we change the description. On right now, I'm change, I want to change it like right now. I just want John to see it. Be like, oh. <laughs> he'll be upset, but he won't be upset enough to say something. You know, yeah. he we won't there. tell him until after the show tonight. Yeah, so there's not bad improvisation going. Black won't be upset because he can barely read. <laughs> But, but John it's will funnier because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but John, John will be upset. It's okay. Yeah. So you guys make sure you're following along with everything Marvin. Listen, life, with. life is suffering. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm, what the Buddhists say. So. <laughs> I'm just bringing so more we, life. Yeah, we're just gonna bring more life till they wake up. <laughs> yeah. Two geniuses and the rhythm section.
So it's Marvin Music on Facebook. It's MarvinMusic.com. Marvin yeah. with a B. Yeah, we say Marvin with a B. Oh, Marvin with a B. Yeah, it's M-A-R-B-I-N. Yeah. Yeah, Marvin, but it's like Marvin, but with a B. We'll know we're famous when Facebook stops autocorrecting us. When it starts autocorrecting <laughs> Marvin, <laughs> Marvin Gay to Marvin. Yeah. You know, there was a band in Belgium called Marvin, because it was very two last names, and I asked them if there was no Google in Belgium, because they didn't <laughs> check that we were already Marvin, and... They broke up. No, I was about to say they were dead. <laughs> That's because they were geniuses. And now they're dead. Yeah, because they were just the duo. That's so right. They, were, they, were, they, they didn't have two the rhythm geniuses. section. <laughs> they needed the rhythm section. But I just, I just discovered the music on the Spotify either, so it's like we're going. Yeah. yeah. All right, so y'all have been tuned into the 224th episode of the ETX Rock Show featuring Marvin all the way from Chicago, Illinois, playing here at Big Sandy Music Hall uh, tonight. We're in the middle of January 2018. Definitely want to thank Andy and Kate Kirby for hooking us up with this great space here in the basement of the music hall. We're really looking forward to checking these guys out tonight. Um, again, after this outro, we're going to have maybe three or four songs from their performance tonight included in this episode. So you guys make sure you check those out. You can follow along with them on social media at Marvin Music um, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's MarvinMusic.com for their webpage if you want to book them, if you want to buy their music. Um, definitely um, support these guys and do that. Um, and they also, I believe you all also have a YouTube. Oh, yeah. Um, slash also Marvin, Marvin Music. music. Yeah. yeah. So everything is Slash Marvin Music other than Bands in Town, which is Slash Marvin. Yeah. Okay, so everything but uh, Bands in Town is, is Marvin Music. Yeah. Bands in Town is Marvin, and that's M-A-R-B-I-N. B as in boy. Rhymes with Marvin. Google it. It's, it's there. Um, if you tuned in to us for the first time, we definitely want to thank you guys for doing that. And you can find us and follow along with us everywhere on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at ETX Rocks. Please subscribe to us on YouTube. That'll really help us out. We're located at um, we're the ETX Rock Show on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. It's completely free. Unless you hit the button twice, then we're going to charge you $35.99. To tell them that because if they hit it twice and they unsubscribe, mm. that's not cool. So they think they you know what it reminds me? What you said that be like boy. But I talked to Choice Hotels to book rooms, and I sometimes say D like David, X like X, -ray, L -like M like Michael, and then it's like N like Nikel. It's like, what the fuck is Nikel? supporting live music of all genres and all styles and don't ever forget ETX e rocks. T X rocks that's right
folks, this is Aaron Watson. This is Bree Bagwell. This is Jake. And this is Walter from Rocky Queen. This is Curtis Grounds, Monty Pittman. This is Doug Supernon. I'm Heather Rowe. This is Rob Redwan. Ho! Oh, hey folks, I'm WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Hey guys, I'm Katie Lynn, and make sure to tune in to ETX Rocks with Boston Chris. Hello, y'all. This is Ronnie Millsap, and thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rocks show. Tough guy. Ho! Hey, guys, we're Blacktop Mojo, and thank you for tuning in to ETX Rocks.